When Alfred Hitchcock decided he wanted to bring the Robert Bloch novel, Psycho, to the big screen, the shower scene was the pivotal reason why. The murder in the bathtub, coming out of the blue, that was everything. Hitchcock stated. But in 1959, there were many obstacles to filming such an explicit, harrowing scene. The Hollywood production code being the biggest hurdle. Some of the unequivocal language in the code includes, brutal killings are not to be presented in detail, and excessive and inhumane acts of cruelty and brutality shall not be presented. This includes all detailed and protracted presentation of physical violence, torture, and abuse. In addition to these codes on depicting violence, the codes also stipulated that undressing scenes should be avoided and never used. This includes nudity, in fact or in silhouette. Hitchcock and his production team got to work on circumventing every one of these codes. Saul Bass was credited with storyboarding the infamous scene with detailed animation cells from which the crew would work. One of the first big decisions Hitchcock made was to do the film in black and white. In addition to being less expensive, which was part of the calculus, Hitchcock knew that the censors would never allow blood to be shown in full color. But camera work would be the biggest tool in getting this visceral, gritty scene past the censors. Hitchcock would use a copious amount of quick, violent cuts and edits to simulate the vicious act of a death by stabbing. It is reported that Hitchcock used 78 different camera sets and 52 edits to film the 45-second shower scene. Hitchcock would claim that the blade never touched Janet Lee, or Marley Renfro, who was used as a body double for some of the intimate shots, but this was a bit of a stretch on his part, as one frame clearly shows the knife up against her skin. This shot was filmed in reverse, however. The knife was placed against her skin and then pulled violently up and back. The end result being very compelling, indeed. The quick, frenzied shot transitions also helped to conceal sensitive angles of the actors' bodies in order to comply with industry regulations. By using first- and third-person perspectives, as well as points of view from Janet and Anthony sequentially, the viewer is pulled unwillingly into that shower stall. We somehow become both the victim and perpetrator of the killing simultaneously. Hitchcock actually makes us party to the crime in the scene just prior. Using a profoundly voyeuristic filming style, the audience is just as culpable as Norman Bates in peering through that peephole at an unsuspecting Janet Lee as she undresses, unaware of our presence. In addition to strategic camera positioning and numerous jump cuts, Hitchcock uses sound to ensure we experience the violence to its maximum. Hitchcock experimented with several organic materials in an attempt to simulate the sound of a blade penetrating human skin. He would, in the end, settle on cassava melons to achieve the desired effect. Hitchcock also deftly incorporates the use of stringed instruments to create the jabbing, shrieking sound that has become iconic to the scene. Hitchcock uses the violin throughout the film, but for the shower scene, the mutes, velvet pads covering the strings near the neck, were removed to allow for a sharper, more penetrating tone as the bow is pulled short and abruptly across the strings. The effect is nerve-shattering. The blood circling the drain is also integral to the scene. Many products were experimented with to get the look Hitchcock wanted. Chocolate syrup, specifically. Hershey's chocolate syrup would ultimately provide the right texture and viscosity the shot required. Exploiting these techniques to the full and the lubricating effects of alcohol, as Hitchcock put it, referring to the whining and dining of a key sensor, Hitchcock orchestrated his magnum opus and gave us one of the most iconic scenes in movie history. Here is the infamous scene.
Oh, God, mother! Oh.